Hello, I'm Eric Strong from the Palo Alto Veterans Hospital and Stanford University. This is the eighth lecture in this series on mechanical ventilation, and the topic is ventilator options. The learning objectives of this lecture are as follows. First, to understand the basic options used during mechanical ventilation. And second, to be able to choose appropriate ventilator options when initiating mechanical ventilation in a typical patient with respiratory failure. Let's go through the list of commonly available vent options. First is the vent mode. Next, the fraction of inspired oxygen, usually abbreviated FiO2. Tidal volume. Respiratory rate. Positive end expiratory pressure, usually referred to as PEEP. Pressure support. Flow shape and contour. And finally, the ratio of inspiratory time to expiratory time usually abbreviated as I to E ratio. I'll now discuss these one at a time with the exception of vent mode, which was the subject of the entire seventh lecture. FiO2 is actually the only vent setting that is truly applicable to and controllable with every vent mode. Because of theoretical concerns of oxygen toxicity within the lung, the FiO2 should be titrated to the lowest value which still maintains adequate oxygenation. What constitutes adequate oxygenation varies depending upon the patient's pre-existing physiologic substrate and upon the patient's current situation. For example, a target O2 saturation in a previously healthy patient, now in cardiogenic shock from an acute MI, may be 97% or higher, while the target O2 sat might be only 88-92% to 92 for a patient with chronic COPD on HOMO2 now with acute on chronic respiratory failure. In common practice, it is first set at 100% immediately after the patient is first intubated and then titrate it downward over one to several hours as indicated by pulse oximetry and or serial ABGs. There's a long-standing theory that FiO2s greater than 60% lead to oxygen toxicity in the lungs. Therefore, if uh, adequate oxygenation requires FiO2 above 60%. Additional strategies should be employed, such as increasing PEEP, uh, performing recruitment maneuvers, um, or a trial of a different mode. Patients in whom these additional strategies are not sufficient to allow the FiO2 to be brought to 60% or lower are occasionally said to have what's called refractory hypoxia. Uh, at this point, they may be candidates for some rather extreme measures uh, particularly if at an academic institution. These might include things such as uh, prone ventilation or ECMO. These will be discussed at a future lecture. The next option to discuss is tidal volume. Tidal volume is most applicable to volume cycled modes such as assist control and SIMV. In pressure controlled modes, tidal volumes are still important but are not under direct control of the ventilator. Initial program tidal volumes should always be weight-based. Typical values are 10 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight for healthy lungs. This might be used when a patient is intubated for a reason not directly related to pulmonary pathology, such as neurologic catastrophe, drug overdose, or during an operative procedure. Patients with COPD are typically ventilated with tidal volumes closer to 8 milliliters per kilogram. Lower volumes in these patients has numerous benefits such as lower risk of autopeep, lower risk of barotrauma, and lower risk of inadvertently overcorrecting a chronic respiratory acidosis. In ARDS, typical volumes are 6 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight, or sometimes even less. Ventilation in ARDS will be the primary topic of the next lecture. As a general rule, higher tire volumes lead to lower PaCO2s higher pH, and higher plateau pressure, while lower tidal volumes lead to the opposite. Next is respiratory rate. This is most applicable with modes that have time triggering functions, such as assist control and SIMV. Other modes such as pressure support ventilation only use this value as a backup rate in the event of apnea. Typical respiratory rates are 10 to 20 breaths per minute in order to provide 7 to 10 liters per minute of minute ventilation. Higher rates result in lower PaCO2s and higher pH, 
along with a higher likelihood of auto peep, predominantly due to decreased expiratory times. However, there are circumstances such as ARDS where increased minute ventilation might be better achieved through higher rates rather than higher tidal volumes. This is also discussed more in the next lecture. Lower respiratory rates result in the opposite effects. Here is a graph of the relationship between respiratory rate and both PaCO2 and arterial pH. Either an increase in dead space ventilation or a decrease in tidal volume will result in a decrease in alveolar ventilation, which will shift this upper curve up and to the right. Now maintenance of the same PaCO2 will require a higher respiratory rate. The same physiologic changes will also result in a shift in the relationship between pH and respiratory rate like so. A higher rate will also be necessary to maintain a constant pH. Positive end expiratory pressure, usually referred to as PEEP, has been mentioned multiple times in the lecture series so far. Although conceptually simple, in practice it is actually a surprisingly complicated aspect of ventilation. In the basic sense, it is a continuous positive pressure present throughout all ventilation. It is relevant for just about all ventilator modes and pretty much in all circumstances. There are many, many physiologic effects of PEEP. The most clinically relevant are usually an increase in alveolar recruitment and an increase in alveolar surface area for gas diffusion, uh, which both work to increase oxygenation. PEEP also results in a decrease in cardiac preload and a decrease in left ventricular afterload. These effects can increase cardiac output in patients with CHF and volume overload, though they can decrease blood pressure in other patients. Finally, PEEP increases right ventricular afterload, which can result in an increase in right to left intracardiac shunts in patients with certain forms of congenital heart disease. It's important to realize that as far as the peripheral tissues and vital organs are concerned, simple oxygen saturation may not be as critical as a physiologic parameter known as oxygen delivery. Oxygen delivery is proportional to the product of oxygen saturation, hemoglobin concentration, and cardiac output. This chart demonstrates why this might be important for patients receiving PEEP. In nearly all patients, Increased PEEP leads to increased oxygen saturation. While in patients who are either euvolemic or hypovolemic, increased PEEP can lead to decreased cardiac output as a consequence of impaired venous return. Thus, there is a sweet spot where an optimal PEEP provides a trade-off between O2 saturation and cardiac output in which peripheral oxygen delivery is maximized. In standard practice, however, Clinicians don't usually set PEEP to maximize cardiac output, but rather set it to the lowest value that allows FiO2 to be equal or less than 60% with a minimum value of 5 centimeters of water. This practice is standard more because it's easy to do rather than because it's actually the best way to manage patients. Uh, selection of optimal PEEP is discussed a bit more in the next lecture, uh, particularly in regards to management of ARDS. The next option to discuss is pressure support. This is the amount of additional positive pressure beyond a PEEP that is provided during inspiration. It is an integral parameter in pressure support ventilation and BPAP and is almost always used in SIMV. Uh, to better understand how pressure support and PEEP relate to one another, here is a tracing of pressure versus time of a patient using pressure support ventilation for approximately two respiratory cycles. The positive pressure is higher during inspiration and lower during expiration. PEEP is equal to this value, the pressure during expiration, while pressure support is equal to this value, the maximum additional pressure beyond PEEP that is present during inspiration only. There are various methods described in the literature to estimate an optimal level of pressure support, most of which are rather cumbersome and include measures of physiologic parameters such as transdiaphragmatic pressure with intraesophageal catheters. Uh, one simple way to estimate optimal pressure support, although not necessarily the most accurate, is to set it to the plateau pressure minus PEEP. Uh, in practice, I find that most clinicians typically set pressure support to be approximately twice PEEP, which usually works just fine. 
The option of flow shape, sometimes referred to as flow contour, describes the pattern of airflow during inspiration. It is set by the clinician in volume targeted ventilator modes and always has a decelerating shape in pressure targeted modes as a consequence of lung mechanics. In modes in which it can be directly set, there are two common options. The first is decelerating, in which flow is greatest at the beginning of inspiration and then steadily decreases. The second is constant, in which, as the name implies, airflow is constant throughout inspiration. The difference between the two is that decelerating flow results in a lower peak pressure, higher mean pressure, and lower dead space. Constant flow results in higher peak pressure, lower mean pressure, and less auto peep. The last important option I'm going to discuss is the I to E ratio. This is the ratio between the amount of time spent in inspiration and the amount of, of time spent in expiration. It's relevant in most modes. In assist control and SIMV, it is usually set indirectly via the tidal volume and the flow pattern. In pressure control ventilation, it is usually set directly. And in pressure support ventilation, it is generally outside of clinician and control. Here's a graph of flow rates as a function of time for a single respiratory cycle. The inspiratory time is 1.5 seconds and the expiratory time is 3 seconds. Thus, the I to E ratio is 1 to 2. In this contrasting graph, although the overall cycle is of the same duration, the time spent in inspiration is slightly less and the time spent in expiration is slightly more. This is an I to E ratio of 1 to 3. The difference between longer and shorter inspiratory time is that with the longer inspiratory time, there is possibly better oxygenation, but a higher mean pressure and higher risk of auto peep, while the shorter inspiratory time, there is lower mean pressure and lower risk of auto peep. At this point, I'm going to give a very general summary of typical initial ventilator settings that are appropriate for most patients. Uh, patients with ARDS have special requirements that will be discussed in the next lecture. For mode, in patients with intrinsic hyperventilation, choose SIMV. Without intrinsic hyperventilation, either assist control or SIMV is fine. For FiO2, start at 100% and quickly titrate downward as able to somewhere between 35 and 60% in order to keep arterial oxygen tension between 60 and 80 millimeters of mercury. That 60 to 80 goal is uh, for patients with uh, normal lung parenchyma at baseline. Patients with a history of chronic hypoxia may be better served with a slightly lower oxygen goal. For tidal volume, use approximately 10 cc's per kilogram for patients with healthy lungs, 8 cc's per kilograms for patients with COPD, and start at 6 cc's per kilogram for patients with ARDS. Adjust the tidal volume as necessary based on arterial pH. Also consider lowering it if the plateau pressure exceeds 30 centimeters of water. For respiratory rate, set at 10 to 20 breaths per minute in order to achieve a minute ventilation of 7 to 10 liters per minute. Adjust as necessary based on pH. Start PEEP at five centimeters of water and titrate upwards if arterial oxygen tension is less than 60, despite an FiO2 above 60%. Some clinicians opt to start with no PEEP in patients intubated for pure hypoventilation as in drug overdose. And for pressure support, which is not applicable for the assist control mode um, or pressure control mode for that matter, um, but for SIMV or pressure support, ventilation values between 5 and 20 centimeters of water are used. Some sources will suggest that an optimal pressure support can be estimated as the plateau pressure minus PEEP as mentioned earlier. Remember that a minimum of 5 centimeters of water of pressure support should generally be used to overcome additional resistance of the endotracheal tube or else the patient is likely to experience some degree of discomfort. Regarding the flow contour and IDE ratio, um, I think for most patients it actually doesn't matter too dramatically which uh, choices you start off with. Um, I think the one exception would be patients with bad COPD in whom 
you suspect they will have higher than normal risk of auto peep and air trapping, uh, in which case you may want to start with a uh, constant flow contour if you have the option of choosing that based on your vent mode and uh, may choose for a relatively um, high IDE ratio such as one to three. So that concludes this lecture on ventilator options. I hope that uh, this is going to be useful for you. And uh, please feel free to continue on to lecture nine on lung protective ventilation, which is the predominant means that clinicians currently use to treat patients with ARDS.